Japan is like the enthusiastic professor who teaches his students the subject, but does not take initiative when it comes to practicals. Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga has not been standing up to China on a scale that he should. China is repeatedly intruding into Japanese waters. But Suga is not roping in the self-defense forces to give a jaw-breaking response to the Chinese. He is now facing tremendous domestic pressure to do exactly that. Hi and welcome to TFI Global, the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I am your host Sanbir and in this video, we'll be explaining how Suga needs to do much more to take on China. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga has been going out of his way and highlighting the increase in the aggressive posturing of the Chinese Communist Party in the East China Sea and near the Senkaku Islands. However, this is the limit of the Japanese response to the Chinese pressure tactics. With the 11th incident of official Chinese vessels entering Japan's territorial waters off the Senkaku Islands, members of the Japanese parliament and fellow party members are raising their concerns. As recent as Monday, in yet another case of illegal intrusion by Beijing, two Chinese government vessels entered Japan's territorial waters off the Senkaku Islands in the East China Sea. At such a time, the Yoshihide Suga government is involved in lecturing the whole world about the excesses of Beijing like a peaceful professor but is not willing to take any concrete measure to deal with the situation once and for all. Earlier, during his first talk with his Japanese counterpart, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin reaffirmed the U.S. determination to protect the Senkaku Islands from Chinese expansionism. Japan and China have a territorial dispute over the islands in the East China Sea, known in Japan as Senkaku and in China as the Ayu. According to news reports, Austin and Japanese Defense Minister Nobuo Kishi stated that the Senkaku Islands are covered by Article 5 of the U.S.-Japan Security Treaty, which specifies U.S. defense obligations to Japan. The defense ministers have confirmed their opposition to any military measures that would jeopardize Japan's control over the islands. However, these optics have not been followed by any solid step on the ground, which has fueled the concerns of parliamentarians as well as fellow ruling Liberal Democratic Party members. Worst-case situations could no longer be phased out in the face of repeated Chinese incursions in waters around the Senkakus. As per a Nikkei Asia report, the need for legislation that specifically sets down the rules of engagement in such situations has resurfaced within Japan's governing party. Under current law, Chinese fishermen landing on the islands will be treated as a so-called grey zone situation that falls short of involving the self-defense forces under Japan's legal framework. In February, China expressly permitted its Coast Guard to fire on foreign vessels in waters under its jurisdiction, a move that has made contested waters around the nation even more volatile. The new law also allows the Chinese Coast Guard to forcibly remove vessels. Waters under its jurisdiction is an ambiguous terminology from a Chinese perspective. China claims islands and waters far beyond its baseline, and its maritime claims often have no backing in international law. As per the Nikkei Asia report, an expert invited to a meeting of ruling Liberal Democratic Party lawmakers last week revealed shocking information that China is planning to build up land around the Senkakus and move around 20,000 people there. Flabbergasted lawmakers peppered him with questions. These developments and the increased incursions from the Chinese official vessels, even after the visit of the US Secretary of Defense, has made the Japanese lawmakers and fellow Liberal Democratic Party members highly critical of the way in which current Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga is dealing with the issue. According to the Japanese government, the Police Duties Execution Act requires ships to fire on illegal landing boats. If the police or coast guard is unable to respond sufficiently, the self-defense forces would be deployed to a police action after a phone call and a swift decision by the cabinet. Unconvinced, LDP lawmakers working on defense reform put together a proposal for the legislation last week to fill the gaps. The paper proposes that Japan's coast guard rule be changed. The reforms will allow Coast Guard vessels to use weapons against foreign ships that fail to comply with deportation orders while staying within the limits of international law. While the Suga administration is still optimistic that the USA will come to its rescue in any event of Chinese attempted capture of parts of the Senkakus, many are not convinced. A senior Japanese government official said the US will not take action unless Japan shows a willingness to fight at the front to defend the islands. 
Add to that the increasing confidence of Beijing, which was epitomized during Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi's visit to Japan last year, where he commented at a joint press conference on November 24th, highlighting China's hardline stance on the Senkaku Islands. Former Foreign Minister Seiji Maihara, who is a lawmaker with the Opposition Democratic Party for the People, said that Biden assuring us that Article 5 applies to the Senkakus is not the end of the story. He added that Japan needs to maintain the current situation in which the islands are administered by Japan. While during the era of Shinzo Abe, his aggressive foreign policy stance coupled with his larger-than-life persona was keeping Chinese adventures in check, now with Suga in office, the scare and deterrence are no longer in place. Yoshihide Suga needs to take some drastic measures, whether it be the deployment of the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Forces near and around the Senkakus or construction of military establishments nearby, among other options. Now more than ever, subtle lecturing will be of no help and will turn out to be counterproductive. According to Robert Eldridge, who worked as Deputy Assistant Chief of Staff for Foreign Affairs at US Naval Installations in Okinawa, if China gains possession of the Senkaku Islands and performs land reclamation to construct a military base, the islands would be too close to a US base. The Senkaku Islands, according to Eldridge, are in a highly strategic position. Eldridge said Japan needs to show its resolve to defend the Senkakus without hesitation before an armed conflict takes place. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga should understand that China will not back down without appropriate military intimidation. For Japan too, it will be the best course of action to express the discontent by military and naval positioning. It will signal that Japan will not wait for the USA to come to its help and if need arises, will take China head on.